the only way to diagnose a turner's is to do a special gene test. So, so we should. Th th there's no way of somebody sort of taking a look and saying, "Oh, you haven't got Turner's syndrome." So, the important thing is getting it assessed properly by a specialist. There are so many conditions that can be associated with Turner's that picking them up at the right age and following them up and treating them appropriately is important. So, the most common thing that um, leads one to the diagnosis of Turner's syndrome is um, little girls who are short or don't grow uh, particularly well and a little bit later on if they don't reach or hit puberty. Um, so the treatment with hormones would be almost artificially inducing puberty. Um, and so uh, that has to be done in the right way so that girls res have the right outcome out of it uh, in terms of the physical changes but also womb development because it has to be done very slowly. So we try and mimic as would happen normally as it takes over two to four years. Um, one of the other common things is um, a lot of ear infections. That is one key message for ENT surgeons is if they're seeing little girls with lots of ear infec infections despite adequate treatment if they keep coming back. Once a patient is diagnosed with Turner syndrome, the first thing you want to know is what is the heart doing, okay, in addition to the kidneys. So you can do kidney tests and a kidney scan. But what you want to know is what's the condition of the heart because that has implications for their activity levels. So not everybody has everything that is associated with Turner's syndrome. So the key is keep on looking for things every year, every so many years.